all right welcome to sqc tutorial today we'll be looking at the shortest distance the shortest distance between two points And this is under coordinate geometry, which will be done in MTH 1 to 3. So quickly, I will talk about the shortest distance between two points. Although some textbook, you see it as the distance between two points. But I prefer it as shortest distance between two points. Now, let's say, suppose, suppose we have a point x1, y1. This is the point. And we have another point x2 comma y2 now because we have these two points i want to find the shortest distance between these two points now there are various distances between these two points there are various distances between these two points this is a distance from this point to this point this is a distance from this point to this point but for all these distances there is one that is the smallest distance this smallest distance is what we are going to talk about in MTH 1 to 3. Now, this smallest distance is actually a straight line moving from this point to this point. Now, how do we get this smallest distance? Let's call it D. I would love to construct a right angle triangle. This is your x, your y axis, and this is your x axis. Now, this part on this point, this is your x1, since it's on the x axis. And this is your y1 so this is your x1 and this is your this is your x1 and this is your y1 then if I trace this point downward this becomes your your x2 and if I trace it to this direction this becomes your y2 and this is just a right angle triangle now in getting this distance we have to know the distance between these two places then the distance between these two places. Then we use our Pythagoras theorem to get this equivalent distance, the shortest distance between these two points. Now, if from here to here is x1, and from here to here is x2, it implies that from here to here is actually everything which is x2 minus from here to here, which is x1. So we have gotten this distance as x2 minus x1 or you can call it change in y change in y is x2 minus x1 now change in x rather now how do we get this distance from here to here now we know that from here to the bottom is y2 and from this point to this point is y1 which implies that everything here minus y1 should give you y should give you the distance from here to here which is just y2 minus y1, which you can call change in y, y2 minus y1. Now, from your Pythagoras theorem, change in y, this is change in x. From your Pythagoras theorem, which says that in a right angle triangle, this is a right angle triangle, that the square of the sum of the squares of the adjacent sides is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, which is the longest side of the triangle. Now, the longest side of the triangle is actually the shortest distance between these two points. So, we can therefore say d square, which is this distance, is equal to change in y, change in x square, plus change in y square. Now, d square becomes our change in x is x2 minus x1, then all square, plus our change in y, which is y2 minus y1 or square. Now, to remove this square, we have to square root both sides. So we have d is equal to square root of x2 minus x1 or square plus y2 minus y1 or square. So this is the shortest distance between these two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. With this formula, we can use it to solve these three questions. 
So quickly, let's quickly solve. Let's get the solution to these three problems. Now, the first question is, what is the shortest distance? Like I said, there are various distances between these two points. But the shortest of them all is where this formula works. This is for only the shortest distance. There are infinite distance between these two points. Now, what is the shortest distance between the points A? This is the point A. Let's say this is the point 3,2 and B, 4,5. So, the first point is A, which we normally call x1, y1, is what? 3,2, which implies that our x1 is 3 and our y1 is 2. Then we have point B, which is x2, y2, and that coordinate of that point is 4,5, so which implies that our x2 is 4 and our y2 is 5. The x always comes before the y. Now remember from this formula that the distance between these two points is square root of x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square. Now the truth about this formula is that you can decide to do x1 minus x2. But that is applicable because there is square here. So whichever way you do it, even if there is negative, you must end up with the positive answer here because of this square. Because if you have something like 4 minus 3, 4 minus 3 is 1, but if you reverse it, 3 minus 4 is minus 1. But the square gives the same result. So I'll impute these values here. x2 is 4. So our distance is square root of 4 minus our x1, which is 3, all square, plus our y1 our y2 5 minus our y1 2 all square this is square root of 4 minus 3 is 1 so we have 1 square which is the same thing as 1 then we have 5 minus 2 5 minus 2 is 3 plus 3 square 3 square is actually 9 so i can erase that and put or let me just rewrite it as 9 so So finally, we have our shortest distance between those two points to be 1 plus 9, which is the square root of 10. So because there is no unit, I'll just write units here, root 10 units, or you can use your calculator to get the remaining values. So that's the solution to the first problem. Now for problem 2, for problem 2, it's still the same approach. Now problem 2, what happened was that now they did no longer give they did not ask for the shortest distance between these two points now now they now gave us the shortest distance between these two points but with one unknown coordinate that coordinate is what we are looking for they said if the shortest distance between the points a and b is five what is the value of x so let's quickly do that we know that the shortest distance between two points is x2 minus x1 all square plus y2 minus y1 all square now from here our x2 our x1 is 3 and our x2 is 7 so we have 7 minus 3 so our shortest distance becomes 7 minus 3 all square plus now for this part our y2 is x and our y1 is 1 so we have x minus 1 or square but remember that it gave us the shortest distance we were told that the shortest distance between these two points is 5 so instead of me writing the year i already know this distance so i'll just write 5. now if i square both sides or let me rewrite this i will have square root 7 minus 3 is 16 is 4 so we have 4 square plus x minus 1 square if I square both sides, I will remove the square roots. So I will have 5 square is equal to root 16. Sorry, there is no root again, but I removed it. Root equals to 16, 4 square plus x minus 1 square. Now, some of you will want to open this bracket, but avoid doing that. You have to think very smart. If you look at this now, the variables are in this bracket. Suppose that this variable was here too. Let's say we have something that has relationship with x then you have square 
it will be advisable to open these brackets. But for this case, there is no need to open these brackets. So this is 25 is equals to 16 plus x minus 1 square. Then if I take this 16 here, it turns to negative sign. We have 25 minus 16. Now I can as well say subtract 16 from both sides. So when we have 16 minus 25, that is equivalent to 9. We have x minus 1 or square. Now how do I remove this square? I will have to square root both sides. But for this case, now when I square root both sides, I will add my plus and minus sign. Because I will see this as a quadratic equation. So when I square root 9, I will have 3, but I will add minus 3 to it. So this is plus or minus 3 is x minus 1. I've square root both sides. So finally, we can have our x is equals to, if I take this one here, it becomes positive. 1 plus or minus 3. So our x is 1 plus 3, which is 4, or 1 minus 3, which is minus 2. So for this question, what this means is that there are two possible values of x here that will give that shortest distance 5. So you can try that out. Let's let me show you how how the points how the points will look like. Since we've got them minus two, let me show you how the points will look like. The first coordinate is three comma one. So this is three comma one. This is the point. Then we have seven comma four. So this is seven comma. Four. So the distance between these two points is five, and also we have seven comma minus two since the other value is minus two. So we'll be having something like seven comma minus two. So the distance between this point and this point is actually five and five. So sometimes they can, sometimes they can decide to give you this point, give you this point, give you this point. Now if they give you these two points. Or what they will do, they will give you the distance between these two points and give you the distance between these two points. Probably they may give you some coordinates, some few informations and ask you to look for the distance between these two points. Different ways the question can come. Is it that you go direct here if all the necessary um, variables or all the necessary values are given? Or if you know this angle here, you can use your cosine rule to get this distance here. So there are different ways to solve math problems. Now let's move over to the last, the last example for the shortest distance between two points. So he said, if the shortest distance between point A, which is 2P, comma 1, and point B, which is 4, comma 10P, is 10P, what is the value of P? Now, they gave us the coordinates of the points, which is 2P, comma 1. We do not know the value of P. And they gave us the coordinates of this point B, which is also in terms of P. And they gave us the distance in terms of P. So let's move ahead and solve this easily. Now we know that the distance, the shortest distance between two points is x2 comma minus x1 all square plus y2 minus y1 all square. Now applying this formula here, our shortest distance between these two points is 10p. So we have 10p is equal to square root our x2 is this we have 4 minus our x1 is 2p all square plus our y2 is 10p we have 10p minus our y1 our y1 is 1 so we have all square now if I square both sides if I square both sides I will have our 10p all square is equal to 4 minus 2p all square plus 10p minus 1 all square. Now, for this case, now we can easily open the brackets so that we get our quadratic equation. 
Now, if I square this, I will have 10 squared times p squared, which is 100 p squared, is equal to, we have 4 squared, which is 16. Then there's a negative sign here, 2 times 4, which is 8, times minus 2, which is minus 16 p, plus the square of this, which is 4 p squared, plus 10 p squared, which is 100 p squared, then 2 times 10p, which is 20p, times negative 1, which is minus 20p. Then the square of minus 1, which is plus 1. Now, notice that there is 100p square here, and there is 100p square here. Now, plus, plus. If I take this one to this side, it will become negative. So we have 100p square minus 100p square. So I can easily just remove that out. We have 0 is equal to 16 minus... 16p plus 4p square, then we have minus 20p plus 1. Now everything is already on this side of the equation. Let me rearrange them. I will have 4p square, then this is minus 16 minus 20p, which is minus 36p, then we have plus 17. Plus 17. Everything equals 0. Now, how do we get the value of p? You can decide to use your quadratic formula, which says p is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac all over 2a. So we have minus, minus 36, which gives us plus 36 plus or minus square root of b square. What is our b? 36 square minus 4 times 4 then times 17 which is our c everything all over 2 times 4 now when you use your calculator whatever answer you get will be the value of p or because i, I have no calculator here so you can as well not use calculator and just factor out 4 from this 36 we know that if you divide 36 by 4 you will have one you have i think you have nine 36 so if you factor out four from this 36 something will be left you factor out another four from this 36 something will be left you will be having nine times nine minus 17. we're having 81 81 minus 17 which is seven which is four six you'll be having 64. square root of 64 is actually eight so you have 36 plus or minus. You know you have you factor that 4 here and the square root of that 4 is 2. You factor that another 4 and the square root of that 4 is also 2. So you have 2 times 2. Then times the square root of 64, which is 8, all over 2 times. This is 8. Now, I can still factor out 8 out of everything here. Or let me factor out 2. P becomes, if I factor out 2, I have 18 plus or minus 2 times 8. All over 4. If I factor out 2 again, I will have 9 plus or minus. If I factor out 2 again, I will have plus or minus 8 all over 2. So this is 9. 9 plus 8 is actually 17. So our P becomes 17 over 2 or 9 minus 8 is 1. So we have 1 over 2. So the two values of P is 17 over 2 or 1 over 2. So just like this second question, there are two values of p that such that when you times it by 2 and you times it by 10, that the shortest distance between these two coordinates will give you 10p. So that's all for this video. In our next video, we'll talk about the midpoint of a line. Then in subsequent video, we'll talk about equations of a straight line, perpendicular lines, and lines that meet at a point. And we'll also talk about the perpendicular distance of a point to a line. So do not forget, please like and share this video. Subscribe to Exquisite Academy. And also, if you have any issues with mathematics, you can share it on the comment section. You can just share it on the comment section. We'll do a video on that. So that'll be all for this video. Thank you very much.